Brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing. Sulky Threads. Express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Our exclusive fabric partners. Be sure to look for their newest lines of fabric. Welcome to Quiltmaker's Block Network. I'm Paula Stoddard with Quiltmaker Magazine, and today I'm going to share with you Stepping Stones, block number 228. This block was designed by Janice Averill and is found in Quiltmaker's 100 Blocks, Volume 3. If you have a stash of strips, this block is a great way to use them. I'll show you how to make the block and then discuss different ways that you can stabilize the bias edges. For this block, you will need eight assorted medium to light tone-on-tones -tone and prints. You'll also need one focus fabric for your applique circle. The cutting dimensions can be seen on your screen. The first thing you'll need to do is sew your strips together, starting with the longest strips in the center and the shortest strips on the edges. Now you'll need to sew them together so that they keep the same design for when you cut your square. So the easiest way to do this is to mark the center of your strips. So you'll fold your strips in half and finger press a fold right in the middle of the strip. And continue to do that with all of the strips. Then when you sew your strips together, you'll line up your strips so that your folds are right on top of each other. And then it would probably be helpful to place a pin in right in the middle and then closer to the two edges. Then you can sew your seam and press this open. You'll continue to do the whole thing from the middle to the edges to complete sewing your strips together. So now you have all of your strips sewn together, it's time to trim this into your 12 and a half inch square. The easiest way to do this is to fold your strips in half and once again finger press all the way to the edges so that you'll have the center of your strips on the edges. Then you're going to use your 12 and a half inch ruler to trim your block. You'll use the seam line as your guide this direction and the folds as your guides in this direction. So you'll line up your center line right on your seam line and the, these points of your ruler right on your folds. Then you're going to use your rotary cutter and you're going to trim off all of these jagged edges. After you've trimmed your square, you're left with these jagged edges. You pull those off and here you have your trimmed strips. Now it's time to add your applique circle. You'll prepare your circle for turned edge applique, and then you need to center your circle onto your block. So the easiest way to do this, again, is to use your seam line as a guide here. Fold your block in half diagonally, finger press a fold, and then you'll do the same thing with your circle. You'll press it in half, then you'll fold it and finger press it in half again. Then you'll use this seam line and this fold as guides to place your circle using the folds that you've just made in your circle. So I've got a fold line here, a fold line here, a fold line here, and here on this seam line. And after you've placed it, you can use your favorite applique method to applique the circle in place. You can use a whip stitch, you can use a machine blanket stitch, whatever is your favorite stitch. Now that you have your completed block, it's time to sew your blocks together. But before you do that, you need to stabilize your bias edges. This block has bias edges all around the outside. There's a few different ways you can do that. One way you can do this is to fuse a one inch strip of lightweight fusible interfacing along the edge of your block. This gives it just enough stabilization so that your block won't stretch. Another way you can do this is to hand baste a running stitch along the edge of your block. I've used a bright thread here so you can see it, but you'll probably want to use a neutral thread. Just be sure that you make your stitch close to the edge of the block so that it can be caught in your quarter inch seam allowance. My favorite way to stabilize bias edges is with spray starch. You just do a light spritz along the edge and gently press your iron to your block 
and that will stabilize your edges very nicely. This block is very versatile because you can rotate it and change the colors to create lots of exciting designs. In this design, the blocks are rotated so that the first row goes one direction and the second row goes another direction and so on, and it creates fun zigzags that go all the way down your quilt. In this design, the blocks are rotated every other block, which creates some fun kind of pinwheels and diamonds in your quilt design. In this quilt, the blocks are also rotated every other block and they create an entirely different looking diamond design. In this design, I've played with the color a little bit and created kind of a Christmas looking design. I've used green and white strips for the background and then red for the circles. This would be a great way to show off all of your fun red Christmas fabrics. Follow Quiltmaker on Pinterest for lots of fun, quilty inspiration. Stepping stones and 99 other fun blocks can be found in Quiltmaker's 100 Blocks Volume 3. Thanks for joining me today, and we hope to see you again here at Quiltmaker's Block Network. I like Mary Ellen's. Okay. What do I do? Okay. I like Mary Ellen's. I like Mary Ellen's. <laughs>